Welcome back, future educators. In this screencast, we take a look at angle side angle and angle angle side as potential congruence theorems. I mean, we already have side side side. We already have side angle side. So we look to see if other combinations of sides and angles work. So what gives us the idea that something might work? Well, consider the angle side angle case. The angle side angle case says um, if I have a triangle and another triangle and I've got this angle and that angle, they're congruent. I got this side and this side and they're congruent. I got this angle and this angle and they're congruent. Is it true that the triangles are congruent? And the question really boils down to if you have a segment, a segment, that's the side, right? Still on angle side angle for folks who are who are checking us out. Here's the side. If we draw an angle of a given measure here and an angle of a given measure here, is there only one possible third vertex? in this half plane, is that the case? And, and so it turns out if this is A and this is B, uh, so, so we know that this side length is set. If we build an angle this way at some given measure and we build an angle this way at some given measure, must it be that there's only one possible vertex C? And that answer is yes, it must be. We build some angle here and construct, and then we build some angle here and construct. Because this angle is a fixed number, this ray is fixed. Because this angle is a fixed number, this ray is fixed. And these two rays are not parallel because this angle and that angle add up to less than 180 degrees. So this ray and this ray have to intersect somewhere. They intersect up here. That point is, verse, uh, is vertex C, and triangle ABC is well-defined, which means that if you ever have a scenario where angle, angle, and the side between them is congruent to angle, angle, and the side between them, Angle side angle is a legitimate way to prove that two triangles are congruent. It's because of this picture. So then we start thinking about the other option. Is angle angle side legitimate? Well, angle angle side is also legitimate for the following reason. Let's imagine that we have two triangles. Uh, let's even give them names. Uh, this will be triangle CAT, and this will be triangle DOG, and we'll set up what angle angle side means. Angle angle side means that you've got one pair of angles, and then you've got another pair of angles, and then you have a side, but the side is not between the angles. So it's not this side congruent to that one. It's this congruent to that, or this congruent to that. So let's, for the purpose of argument, say it's this congruent to that. So the question is, is triangle cat congruent to triangle dog? Is that true? And the answer is yes. And here's how we know. Pause for a moment. See if you know why we know. Okay, here's my thought. If we know what this angle is and we know what that angle is, let's imagine this is 70 degrees and this is 75 degrees. Uh, do you know what that is? If this is 70 degrees and this is 75 degrees, do you know what that is? Sure you do, because you know what the angles of a triangle add up to, and so you know that angle ACT is congruent to angle ODG. Well, now you've got angle side angle congruent to angle side angle, and so these triangles are, in fact, congruent. Now, we don't have to go to this step anymore. We have an argument that says if angle angle side happens, then angle side angle happens and we're okay. 
So again, this picture over here confirms this picture over here. And so if you have two triangles where this pair of angles are congruent and that pair of angles are congruent and any side of the triangle matches up with any corresponding side of this triangle, they've got to correspond. It can't be this side here and this one between those angles. Angle angle side is a legitimate congruence theorem for exactly this reason. So how does that help us? Well, let's just imagine that we have some parallelogram. Can I make a parallelogram? Here's a parallelogram. This thing is a parallelogram. Uh, G R A M. It's a parallelogram. And because it's a parallelogram, this side's parallel to that one, this side's parallel to that one. Well, let's imagine, shall we, that we draw in this diagonal right here. Well, what do we know? We know that when you have a parallel line and another parallel line and you cut them with what's called a transversal, then these angles have to be congruent. They are alternate interior angles. But wait a minute. GR is also parallel to MA. So this angle is congruent to that one. And we know that this side right here is shared between triangle ARM and triangle GMR. And so by golly, triangle AMR is congruent to triangle GRM because angle side angle holds. And what does that mean? Well, that means that this side is congruent to that one and this side is congruent to that one. And in fact, it means that this opposite angle is congruent to that opposite angle. And it's for that reason that we always conclude with a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite angles are congruent. Even though the only thing you know about a parallelogram at the very beginning is that this is parallel to that and this is parallel to that. But we can prove by angle side angle on triangles that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent and the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And those are things that you just accept to be true, but they're true for exactly this reason. And that's why we're glad that we have angle side angle in the bank, angle angle side in the bank. Okay, excellent. Well, we've, we've neared the 10 minute limit and so I'm going to let this go. There's another screencast coming that talks about when quadrilaterals are congruent. It's short. You'll love it. We'll come back.